Bible study. Certainly good to have you with us if you're joining us online. For those that are members of West End here, we're certainly glad to have you. And if you're visiting us and you are part of our Bible study this morning, we're certainly glad to have you as well. We will begin our new classes coming on July the 5th. And as all of our members know, here live at the building, we will have uh, the Resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that's going to be the adult class that we're going to have in our auditorium. If you have been joining us online, you'd like to join us uh, here live at the building. We will have been back, I believe it's seven weeks now uh, for the services, so we would, uh, we would love to have you join us. We're practicing social distancing. Uh, we are also doing other things to uh, keep our distance and and, and seating and also in the way that we interact with one another and protective masks and temperatures being taken and trying to take every precaution that we can to make sure that the environment's as safe as it can possibly be for us to be able to be together and not take a chance of spreading the virus but also be able to see each other, worship together. So we hope as we begin the uh, new Bible adult classes and uh, also the children's classes will be here as well of course. So. All of the lower grade classes through high school and the adult class will start on July the 5th. David Lamphere, our co-teacher for Frequently Asked Questions, will have one last class for us on Wednesday night, uh, Frequently Asked Questions. But this morning, we're going to finish up the lesson on forgiveness. So uh, appreciate everybody again tuning in. And let's, let's have a prayer, if, if you will, as we begin to think about forgiveness and how it needs to be reflected in our lives every day. Our merciful Heavenly Father, we're so very thankful for all the many blessings that you give us. We thank you for the rain that we've been able to enjoy. We thank you for the, the opportunity that we have to be together for this Bible study this morning. We thank you for the means that we have to broadcast this so folks can see it in their home while we're still using this avenue of communicating and communing with one another. And we're also very thankful for the opportunity that we've had to be back together over the course of the last seven weeks. As we study this morning, we pray, Heavenly Father, that we will think about forgiveness and we'll, we'll consider what we need to do, how we need to let forgiveness be reflected in our lives and in the way that we are taught by the Bible and God's Word and the example of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we also pray that if there are those that we need to forgive, if there are those that we have <clears throat> situations with where we need to try and lead them to forgiveness because of a sin that they've committed against us, we pray, Heavenly Father, that our heart will be as it should so that we won't be a kind of individual that is not Christ-like in, in our attitude and character, but that will also lead someone to do something that needs to be done to make a situation right. Please forgive us where we sh fall short, and as we go through this service, help everyone to be listening and thinking about how uh, it needs to be applied to their life. All this we pray in your son Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so <clears throat> when we ended the last class, one, a couple of things that I talked about, we think about forgiveness, and we think about character, and really, forgiveness is much a character thing for us individually as it is about the person being forgiven. And when I say that, I think you'll better understand as we go through class, you know, think about the forgiveness of Jesus Christ and all that he went through. Uh, the fact that he was willing to come down from heaven. The fact that he was willing to do his part in, as deity to walk on the face of this earth knowing what would happen, knowing what he would have to do to do his part, uh, and even before we could repent, uh, willing to forgive us, but setting in motion the relationship that is necessary for us to be able to be with God for eternity, then that can only come through him. So, I went the wrong way, sorry. <laughs> so, here's what we're going to talk about today. When is forgiveness given? And I want everybody to grab their Bibles and uh, take notes, if you will. Uh, I've, here we are at the very last of the class, and I've finally gotten a few uh, overhead presentations made. My apologies for that. But hopefully they'll be uh, beneficial to you now. So Luke, the 17th chapter, 
and verse 3. Luke 17, 3, it says, Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. This is Jesus Christ talking. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. What does it mean to rebuke someone? It means to bring it to their attention. It means if someone has sinned against us, we are to bring it to their attention. And if he repents, forgive him. So this is part of what we need to think about with regard to forgiveness. Forgiveness is conditional, just like salvation is conditional. Forgiveness is conditional upon someone being willing to repent. Ephesians, now it goes to the heart of the matter and our heart. That, that's what we're really going to get into today. So we think about we're going to have the heart of, of a Christian, of Christ. But there's kind of the ground rules right there, Luke 17, 3. Go to Ephesians, the fourth chapter in verse 32. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ also forgave you. Now go to Mark, the 11th chapter, in verse 25. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you of your trespasses. So the question I've got on the slide there is, is there conflict, is there conflict in the scriptures? And no, there is not. There is not. It's perfect. It's complete. It tells us everything that we need to know. But what we are learning from those scriptures is that we have to have the heart of forgiveness. Uh, we also have to lead someone. We've got to invest in leading someone to repentance too. Uh, again, I want to continue to think about, and as we go through this lesson today, I want you to focus on Luke 17 and 3. Take heed to yourselves if your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. That's the thing we're going to think a lot about this morning as we talk about this. In Psalms 119 and 160, I've got it right there on the screen. It says, the entirety of your words is truth and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. There is no conflict in the scriptures and we know that. We have got to take the collective of what is found in God's Word and understand it in a comprehensive way so that we make sure we understand what is expected of us. We, many times, Scripture is taken out of context so that we don't know the complete answer to what's being said. Uh, generally, there is, you know, there are times where there is a single passage with regard to something that we are to do or to not do, but many times there are a number of scriptures that come together to give us the full spectrum of what it is that we need to understand um, so that we will make sure that we are in, in, uh, in, a, in accordance to God's word in the things that we do and we say and how we act and what we, how, how we go about addressing an issue. Look over in Mark the 11th chapter have that on the board there mark eleven twenty five. 25 doesn't say anything about repentance when he says when you are standing praying if you have anything against anyone forgive him that your father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses so it doesn't say anything about when he repents forgive him but again if you go back to luke 17 3 what does it say we're supposed to do luke 17 3 rebuke him if your brother sins against you rebuke him if he repents forgive him hold on to that thought as we continue to go through these scriptures today we've got to forgive someone but also we need to if necessary be able to go to that person to point out their sin against us rebuke them so that they can be forgiven so what does forgiveness from God require? Go to Matthew, the, um, the sixth chapter, and verse 14. 
Matthew 6 and verse 14. Do we expect God to just forgive us, uh, or is there some kind of action that's required of us to be forgiven? It says, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. So as God forgave us, we also need to be willing to forgive. Also in Matthew, the 18th chapter in verse 35, it says, So my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. We want to be able to forgive people. We should forgive people, but we also have an obligation to have the kind of expectation of others that God has of us. Forgiveness from God requires repentance if we are going to be forgiven by him. And God sees our actions, and that reflects the conviction of our sorrow where forgiveness is granted. God's going to forgive us when we truly repent and turn away from our sin. And that's what his expectation is of us for forgiveness. So my question is, what is our attitude toward forgiveness? The, at, the attitude of forgiveness that we have toward others. We're to give forgiveness to those who repent of their sins against us. And to repent is to be sorry. It's to turn away from. And if we forget the sin against someone else before they repent of what they have done, they might continue in their sin. They might continue to let it be a problem. They might, they might have a problem that they don't even realize they have. So if I sin against you and you don't tell me that I have and I'm in some state of mind, maybe it's through arrogance or pride or some other sin that has got a hold of me and I don't recognize it, then maybe I don't even know that I've sinned against you. Maybe I'm so far into sin that I don't see it. Now, maybe folks on the outside may not recognize it at all. And my sin against you may be the only thing that could potentially cause me to be brought back into the fold, cause me to be brought back into being in a right relationship with God. So what obligation do you have to me but to rebuke me of the sin that I have sinned against you? Is that easy. Sometimes maybe it is and sometimes maybe it isn't. But our actions toward the unforgiven should cause us to want to try and lead them out of their sin and back to the Lord. That's what we're supposed to be able to do for brothers and sisters in Christ when someone has sinned against us. And if we become indifferent toward them and the sin that they have sinned against us, how are we going to lead them back to the Lord? Maybe they've not sinned against anybody else. Maybe nobody else has encountered the sin that's in their life in the way that we have, and they just continue to drift further and further and further away from the Lord. We have to continue to maintain a forgiving heart. And I, I believe that's the character of Christ. I believe that's doing everything we can to be what God would have us to be and be ready to forgive always, but be committed to helping those folks or that individual make their situation right with God and then they make it right with us. But it requires action from us. We've got to be committed to action to help someone to forgive uh, repent and then have forgiveness in their lives. So the wrong attitude toward us about forgiveness and the lack of responsibility uh, that we are actively involved in with regard to forgiveness may cause someone to continue to sin and as I said drift further and further away from God. If our attitude is well they don't care. 
They're not going to say anything anyway. It's been going on so long, there's no way they're going to change. If that's the attitude that we have toward trying to point out someone's sin against us, then we're not doing our part as a Christian. If we're not careful, we can become hard-hearted toward that individual. And just in general, it might be easy for us to become hard-hearted too. I want you to stop and think for just a minute. We talked a little bit about this on Wednesday night. But I want you to think for just a minute about someone that you may have feel, felt has sinned against you. Pick one person. Like we talked about on Wednesday night, it might be a family member. You know, sometimes it seems like the ones that you love and the ones that should love you, you know, those are the hardest people to be able to sit down and have a conversation with. But what about that situation? If you don't go to that individual with a loving heart, and that is the key with regard to rebuking and repentance and forgiveness. Go over to Proverbs, if you will, and let's look at scripture, scripture there. Proverbs 24, and we're going to start in verse 17. Well, I had it, and it went away. Proverbs 24, and starting in verse 17. Here we go. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls, and do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles, lest the Lord see it, and it displeases him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Do not, refret, uh, do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the wicked, for there will be no prospect for the evil man, the lamp of the wicked will be put out. And then go to verse 29. Do not say, I will do to him just as he has done for me. I will render to the man according to his work. When I say we've got to have a heart of repentance, we have got to continue to be prayerful of the repentance necessary for forgiveness for someone that has sinned against us. Go over to Proverbs 25 and verses 21 and 22. If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. If he's thirsty, give him water to drink. For so you heap coals of fire on his head, and the Lord will reward you. The attitude of forgiveness is the attitude that we should have in our hearts. But we should also be working toward helping them to repent of their sin, bring it to their attention to help them make that situation right with God and right with us. So it's about the character of the heart is what we're talking about. The wrong attitude from us about forgiveness can create problems not only for the individual that has sinned against us, but it can also create problems for us. Us. Because if we do not forgive that person of their sin, uh, that again, maybe they don't know about, then it can be a potential problem for us in the character that we begin to develop as a result of it. It says in Romans 12, 14, bless those who persecute you and do not curse. We must have an attitude of forgiveness to be the kind of example to those that have sinned against us that they can see in us we are Christ-like in the way that we are dealing with something that may be very difficult. Sometimes people's sin against us is intentional. Sometimes they know what they've done to us. And if they look at us and they see how we are, even after they know that they have not treated us right or they've sinned against us, what kind of potential impact can we have on someone like that with the right kind of heart, with the right kind of attitude, with the kind of Christ-centered character that we should have? In Romans 12, 19 through 21, it said, Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it's written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy hungers and feeds, the one we just read in Proverbs, uh, if, he, in, if your enemy hungers, feed him, and if he thirsts, give him a drink. For in so doing, you heap coals of fire on his head, and do not overcome 
by evil, but overcome evil with good. I think the point that's being made in Romans there is if we're not careful, we can let the evil that was done to us overcome us by not trying to work out getting someone to resolve the problem that they have with us and also creating a problem between them and God. We've got to be careful, though, because if we give up on causing someone to think about their repentance and the need for that, then we can potentially lose the opportunity to get someone that is a Christian to repent or bring a non-Christian to the Lord to make sure that their soul is right with God. The thing that we've got to remember is we've all sinned and require forgiveness to be right with God. Every one of us. You know, when we first are baptized, it's that recognition of the, the problems that we have in our lives and how we cannot have a hope of salvation if we're not faithful to God's word. And we've got to make sure that we, we make things right. And when we do that, we say, I, I mean, I can remember uh, when I came to my senses and came down front and ask for the forgiveness of the congregation. I was crying. I was so, I was in such a bad place that, that I put myself. But I came to a recognition through God's word of the things I had to turn away from, repent, and I knew God would forgive me. And you know, there was a period of time where I thought, how can God forgive me? for all the things that I've done against him. But then I realized that it was the love that he had for me that would cause that forgiveness to be real, for me to be able to move forward in my life and be the person that he would have me to be and tell others that might have gone through some of the same things how he makes that available to them if they will return. I got rebuked by his word. So if God will do that for us, why would we not do that for someone else? Ephesians 4 talks about unity in the Lord and how we are all one through Christ Jesus and how he made that possible through his death and the cleansing power of his blood. But we had to change, just like I was talking about. I had to change from the old man to the new man, transitioning from the deceitful lust that drove our lives and the corrupt man to that new man in verse four, uh, chapter 4 of Ephesians in 23, where we are renewed in the spirit of our mind. And how are we renewed in the spirit of our mind? Right here, through God's word. That's the way we are renewed in the spirit of our mind to do what he would have us to do. We've got more of the same in Colossians, the third chapter, and it makes similar observations about who we were before Christ and God and who we should be after Christ and God are part of our lives. In Colossians 3, 12 through 16, look at that with me for just a minute if you will. Colossians 3, and we're going to read 12 through 16. It says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you almost must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection or completeness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So all of that is a reflection of who we should be and how we should live our lives every day, the character that we should have, and a strong desire for leading others to repentance so they too can 
be led by the light and the example that we have of Christ. When we think about who we are and how we should forgive someone, we need to think about having the character of forgiveness and not be lazy as Christians to cause someone to repent. Again, when we were looking at Colossians there, if you look at the things that it says that should be a part of who we are, tender mercy, kindness, mercy, humility, meekness, long-suffering, like God is long-suffering toward us, and forgiving and loving, and that is the bond of perfection. But it's very action-based for us to be able to forgive someone. It's not something that the ball is totally in their court. If they don't know they've sinned against us, or even if they do, if they do not repent, we need to rebuke them to make them aware of it, to try and save a soul for the Lord. You know, I thought about, while I was studying this lesson, Christ forgave you and me before we could even repent, before we even came into existence, before we even knew we would sin. But he did that because he knew that was what had to be done to make a way for us to be with God through him. And now we've got the responsibility of causing those in sin that are in sin against us to repent by rebuking them and provide forgiveness. In Luke 23, 34, Christ said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He had the attitude of forgiveness. And we've got to have that same kind of attitude of forgiveness as well. When we are forgiving and providing forgiveness to others, it, it basically gives us the opportunity to show complete love and compassion toward others. And when I was thinking about this, I got to thinking about the prodigal son in Luke 15. Did the father have a son that deserved forgiveness based on what he had done? He's by, somebody recently mentioned it, I've heard, I can't remember who it was. But basically he was saying when he got ready to leave, look, I want my part of your stuff and I'm gone. I'm out of here. I, I don't like what you got. I want to go do something else. And so then he goes out and he starts living a riotous life. But when he figured out that what he had was so much better than what he had done, he came back home wondering whether or not his father would forgive him. But the father loved his son and he did forgive him. And did the father want his son to repent of his sin and return to him? Absolutely. Because when he got ready to come back, it says that his father was standing there waiting for him. And you can't help but imagine that every day that father may have gone to that certain place and just stood and looked across the horizon and wondered. Maybe he didn't, but I wonder, you know, in this, in this story, I wonder if that's not the attitude of always looking for someone to repent. And when he came back, he, opened him, he welcomed him with open arms, and his son was truly sorry for what he had done. And the point is our attitude toward others when they repent of their sin should reflect love and compassion like we see in the prodigal son in Luke 15, 20 through 24. So if someone does, that's the other thing we need to talk about as we begin to wrap this lesson up. And that is if someone sins against us, they repent, they come back to us, and they say, Jim, I am really sorry for the way I treated you. Jim, I am really sorry for the things that I said to you. Or I go to someone and do that. Then what is my heart? Am I going to forgive them like the other scriptures that we've read? Yes, we we have an obligation, responsibility to forgive them and then put it behind us and try to encourage them in any way that we possibly can. We talked a little bit about the unmerciful servant in the other class in Matthew 18, 21 through 35. 
And basically, it clearly shows that God's not going to forgive us if we don't forgive others. So someone might repent and come to us and ask for forgiveness. And if we say, well, no, you know, that was a business deal, man. You caused me to lose $5,000. You know, I've been in situations like that before where you've got a situation going on, you're in a deal, and you lose money as a result of something somebody else did. Uh, you can't hold on to it. you just got to let it go. You can't let it continue to be a problem for you. Because what good does it do other than create bitterness, strife, anger, all those things that are not supposed to be a part of who we are? We do have to have repentance in, in summing this thing up and circling back around to the beginning, Luke 17, 3 through 4, take heed to yourselves if your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. And it's the same way that God will be toward us. Repentance requires admission and amendment of lives. You know, you think about your individual life when you repented of your sins, if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, you've got to admit it first and then you've got to amend it. You've got to change it. You've got to make it different so you won't do it again. It's our responsibility as a Christian to get someone to repent of wrong if they have sinned against us. And forgiveness requires accountability from you to the forgiven. If somebody has sinned against us, as we're looking, oh, I'm a slide off there, sorry about that, maybe two. <laughs> there you are, sorry about that. If someone sins against us, we've been engaged in the responsibility of helping bring them back to God. In Matthew 5, 19 through 20, we have an obligation, responsibility, if someone has sinned against us, Instead of just saying, huh, well, Matt Wilson sinned against me. He's in the booth, so I'm using him as an example this morning. Matt Wilson sinned against me. I just wonder if he's going to come back and, forget, and, and apologize. I wonder if he's going to repent of what he did. It says in Matthew 5, 19, 20, Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death, and cover a multitude of sins. I think the point there in James is we've got a responsibility to the person that has sinned against us to rebuke them of the sin that they've committed. But then we've also got a responsibility to forgive them so we don't put ourselves in a position where we become hateful, angry, and think about that situation in the wrong way. Have you ever done that? Have you ever done that? Somebody's wronged you you don't go say anything to them and then think about what it makes you feel in your heart. And then you're holding on to that. You're holding on to this anger. You're hang holding on to this wrong kind of character traits <laughs> that should not be a part of who we are. That's not what God wants us to do. David uh, Lamphere, my co-teacher, uh, sent this to me yesterday. And it's a quote from Alexander Pope, to err is human and to forgive, I just, I just type give, to forgive is divine, is what that should say. And the thing we've got to remember is we all sin, and God forgives, of our, our, forgives us of our sin if we repent. And when we do what the Bible says, and someone repents and we forgive them, then it's acting in a godly way to do that. Because he forgave us, we've got to be willing to forgive others. And here's what I would say to you this morning as we think about this question. If you've got any unresolved situations with other people, don't let it become a sin for you or for me. Speak to those individuals to do your part so that they can do their part too. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, if you say, well, I don't have anything unresolved with anybody, you're not thinking hard enough because it's hard for me to believe. I mean, in studying this lesson, there, there were a couple of personal situations that I got to thinking about, and I thought, I've got a couple of conversations that I need to have with some people because 
in those situations, it's caused me to have the wrong kind of attitude toward that individual. And that's wrong. That's wrong. And we need to make sure that we're right with God. And if someone sinned against us, we've pointed that out to them. Final slide. Should we forgive someone who has sinned against us in our heart before they repent? We need to have the attitude of forgiveness. We need to have the actions of rebuking someone to try and cause them to repent so their sin can be forgiven. So it's a kind of a, a combination of things that I think are required for us to be able to forgive someone, but we have to have the character that has been described in God's word so that we can make sure that it is right, so that we can make sure that we are living in a way that God's going to be pleased and that we will have our relationship in a way that he's going to be satisfied with who we are and that we will cause someone else to repent if they have not uh, put things in motion to be able to do that. Appreciate everybody joining us for our Bible class this morning, Frequently Asked Questions. We will begin our worship service at 10, 15 here at the building, and it will be back online live as well. And we would encourage you to come to the building. We've had good attendance from our members uh, over the course of the last number of weeks, and we uh, look forward to seeing everyone back at 10, 15 this morning. Thank you for joining us.